Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher Sabine, and a professor of oceanography at the University of Hawaii, and today I'm going to talk to you about sampling for carbon measurements. There are several steps in doing this. First, you'll want to rinse the bottle and make sure that it's prepared. Then you're going to fill the sample. Then you're going to add mercuric chloride to preserve the sample. And then you're going to grease and seal the sample so that it's ready for transport back to the lab where you can do the measurements. We're now ready to collect our samples. What I do when I'm going out on a small boat is I put all of my supplies into a small cooler. That way I can keep everything together. So what I have in here is a sampling tube, just a piece of Tigon that's roughly a foot long that you can use to collect the sample. You'll need some Kim wipes. You want some gloves, labeling tape, and a marker. You want your bottles with the rubber bands and clips. And you want a small box of supplies that includes the pipette for adding the mercury, the pipette tips, a waste bag, your uh, mercuric chloride, and a syringe full of grease, a Pizion L grease. If you have all those components, then you're ready to begin. So the first step is getting the water. And there are multiple ways to get the water. Sometimes you'll have a Niskin bottle, like this, that you'll lower down and trip to collect the water sample. If you do that, you're just going to stick your tubing onto this nozzle and fill the sample bottle uh, following the techniques that we'll talk about later. But what I want to show you today is how you would collect a water sample if you don't have a Niskin bottle. In other words, you're just going to be reaching over the side of the boat to collect the water. And what you want to do is we're going to take our sample bottle and you pull off the, the stopper and set it aside so that it stays dry. Now you're going to fill this water bottle. You stick the tube all the way up into the bottom of the water bottle. And you're going to take your thumb and put it over top of the tube. This way, what you're going to do is you're going to lower all of this into the water. And when you do that, the water will not go into the bottle because the air is trapped up in there. But you don't want to, to just fill the bottle sideways because then that, that'll introduce air into the sample, which is bad. So we're going we're gonna to lower the whole thing vertically down until the bottle is completely submerged. That also gets you below the surface layer where there could be muck or, or surfactants or something on the water. Once the bottle is submerged, just slowly release pressure with your thumb that will allow the air to escape out the tube and the water will slowly enter the bottle without introducing any bubbles. Once you see that the bottle is completely full, turn it right side up and then bring it up with your thumb again over the, over the tube. Now we need to introduce a little bit of a head space into this bottle so with your thumb still over the tube, pull the tube out, and the volume of the tube creates a headspace in the top of the bottle. That's the first step. Now we're ready to poison it, and then we'll seal it. And then we're going to add 200 microliters of mercuric chloride to the sample. Just like that. Make sure to seal this up so it doesn't get uh, spill while you're in, your, in the waves. And then we want to grease the stopper. So you had set this aside before. We're going to put three stripes of grease onto the stopper at a roughly equal distances around. You then take the stopper put it into the top, 
and twist it to make sure the grease gets spread everywhere. You now want to take the bottle and invert it a few times, make sure that mercury is spread throughout. Now all we need to do is put on the rubber band seal. What you do is you take the clip off, slip the rubber band over it, put it over top of the lid, and then snap the ring on. Now your sample is ready to go. Don't forget to label it with uh, your sample location.